Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode, kind of our pilot episode of Retrovania Mania. Hopefully, you're excited because I am, and you're probably not because you have no idea what to expect from the show, most likely. So, yeah. Um, I am here with my co host, Corey. You wanna? Hello, greetings. All right. So, I think. What we should do for episode one is we should have some intros about about ourselves and then uh, get um give you a gist of what the show's purpose of the show purpose of the channel we're gonna plan having some YouTube videos on this channel too uh, and well I'll get into that in the purpose of the show so anyways uh, I'll introduce myself I am Currently retro, I um, some of you probably know me if you were following me on Twitters and things like that. I used to be uh, used to go by the name Unknown. I used to be uh, top three, five, somewhere around there for PlayStation trophies, um, having the most in the world, not a hundred percent completion percentage, um, but. Uh, I kind of left that uh, left that behind. It's kind of a thing of the past right now because it was kind of making me pretty miserable, to be honest. It was kind of cool that I don't know being in that position and stuff and and whatnot. But after years and years of what it boiled down to was getting involved in drama, getting involved in playing the same game six plus times. Just not really having fun, um, missing out on a lot of games I'd rather play, like try to keep numbers up. I mean, I was even like, I don't know, just, it was consuming a lot, a large portion of my life. And, uh, like I said, it wasn't fun, so, and I probably pushed it farther than, than I should have. Um, so currently I, uh... I went through like this rediscovering gaming phase and it was all weird because games didn't even feel the same. I just didn't have fun with like anything. I would just rush through stuff and, and whatnot. But, um, and I actually have had thoughts of going back to it. But then I think like, oh man, how uh, all the, the misery that was uh, accompanying it, I guess I should say. And how it wasn't really, I don't know, it wasn't really like doing anything for me anymore. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the gist of who I am. Um, maybe I'll talk about it a little bit more. I don't want, like, tons of comments and all this about, like, oh, you should go back to trophies or whatever. Just, maybe I shouldn't even mention it. I should have just been anonymous on this whole thing. I don't know. Probably, yeah. I don't know, I'm sure I'll spread bits and info, um, and allude to it at times. Um, because I did learn a lot of lessons from it. Um, it did kind of, guess, kind of help me grow as a person, too. So if I could share and spread and whatnot and help others, that would be, uh, I guess that'd be kind of nice. But, but like I said, let's, let's keep this drama free. This is going to be positive. It's going to be a positivity, uh, I was trying to think of another P word for some alliteration, but I failed. So, anyways, that's a little bit about me. Corey, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Corey, a.k.a. CoreDog411. You may have seen me before on your favorite platform, whether that's Nintendo, Xbox, or PlayStation, as CoreDog411. That has been my presence now for... Over 20 years of gaming, I started out with NES and SNES as a small child and worked my way up through the various consoles over the years. I consider myself a lifelong avid gamer. Um, several years ago, I got primarily invested into PlayStation 4 because that was the platform that my friends had been on. But I will say and readily admit to being all over the place with my gaming history. I've has a, a long lineage of coming from Xbox games. Um, and with that transition over to PlayStation 4, that's primarily where I did 
a lot of my gaming. Um, since then, the glorious handheld device that we love that can also serve as a uh, household console in the Nintendo Switch. I play a lot of games there as well, and I believe that that's where Retro and I will share a lot of our love for gaming with you all. And outside of that, I think it's important to remember that gaming is a hobby and to have fun with whatever it is that you're doing. I know that sometimes we get so invested that we grow upset with you know not winning or not being able to beat it. But I uh, have kind of, in a, in a funny kind of way, had a, a major growth moment like Retro this past year where I started to realize too that I need to enjoy games more. And, uh, and I find the beauty of understanding the mechanics, the game design, the stories that are told, the music that's uh, the music that is created and developed for these games to create an atmosphere and environment. I have become so much more appreciative of that over the past year that I would like to use this as an opportunity and a platform to share those these various games and um, systems that artists, literally artists, have created for us to enjoy. And with that said, I think it's time that we move into our 2020. Well, I think I think we gotta say more of the purpose of the show and explain what kinds oh. of kinds of games and stuff too. But I will say I probably should have also started out my first console SNES, um, and then throughout the years I think I went from SNES N6 to N64, GBA. Oh, I had a Game Boy Color and stuff too. But but then yeah, like Corey, I I basically was just playing PlayStation. Uh, Three and then four and exclusively that because I got very trophy obsessed. Very, very trophy obsessed. I was like, oh man, I'm not going to play anything that does not have any benefit trophy wise to me. And it was caused, like I said, it was causing me to rush games. And like Corey was saying too, I wasn't appreciating the games either. I mean, I was just, even if it was a great game, I, I would just rush it, rush all the dialogue, rush all the story. And then over this past year, actually more so like the last six months, really, when I was actively trying to break away from that, it was hard to just um, appreciate the story and things like that. And um, I'm still actually kind of struggling with that at the moment, like getting back into reading the story and things. But, but yeah, that is, um, I guess, starting to go into the purpose of the show, which Corey, I think, did a fairly good job, but... Um, I would like to, uh, yeah, use this to help, uh, get some word out on some games too, because I did enjoy that aspect of it a lot, like posting tweets and things about indie games that I did play and trying to get some, um, I don't know, word of mouth around for games that are really, really good, um, but they don't have the giant marketing budget or whatever. And then I've played some games like on stream too. Um, uh, that is here, I think too. I do, I do stream and I do plan on streaming uh, games for this uh, podcast, YouTube channel sort of deal. Um, and uh, yeah, getting the names out uh, and, and whatnot. Um, and the name Retrovania, so I'm going to kind of explain that a little bit. So a lot of the games are going to be played on here, not all, because like Corey said, we got gaming is supposed to be fun, and we're not going to not play a game because it doesn't fall into one of these categories or whatever. Um, and do what's fun for you, definitely. If you want to farm something in a game over and over and over again, it's fun for you. By all means, do it. Um, game how you want is is going to be a pretty big... Uh, I'm a big proponent of that. Um, if you want to cheese through a game and it's fun for you, just do it. If you want to try to do it on the hardest difficulty, is that satisfying? Do it. But if it's making you miserable, it's not a lot of our jobs. Some of us, it is our job. But for the most part, it's not. And it should be a relaxing time, an enjoyable time. 
So, anyways, so this is gonna a lot of the games are gonna be like retro inspired indies. Um, and that would be things like something that's inspired by Legend of Zelda or something something along those lines. Or um things of that nature. Um Rogue, because I guess there are gonna be some roguelikes that I play and um before we play this, um including a hint hint maybe a potential game of the year winner here um and then vania i think metroidvania might be like my favorite genre so gotta include that and um i guess that's kind of where that name came from and uh then yeah like indies in those categories and, and whatnot but the name Retrovania also, uh, the poetic side of me, and I'm not very poetic. That was like my worst subject in school. Uh, oh my god, I had such bad grades in poetry class. Um, but anyway, so retro, um, some, this comes from some of the lessons I learned. Um, and so retro, you gotta stay true to yourself. Stay your own kind of retro. Um... And uh, Rogue is kind of, well, don't follow the crowd necessarily. Kind of, don't be afraid to go off, do your own thing. Um, and uh, I personally had a, a huge Go Rogue experience, breaking away from all that, all that trophy stuff. Man, I keep talking about that, and I really, I really shouldn't. Because I guess I want to, we want to be drama-free and positive, but that is, that is part of the name. Um, and then... Vania is kind of like explore things because Vania Metrovania games a lot about exploration and, and whatnot and you got to explore options explore things in life try to figure out what makes you happy and um, yeah and then mania part of the podcast just because it sounds it sounds cool retrovania mania that's the whole reason it's also poetic because it rhymes so yeah. Anyways, I'm sure I'm forgetting things in this uh, little intro here, but um, hopefully you guys stick around and uh, hopefully we can grow this. Growing a positive community, that's also another goal um, that I would like to, to kind of have. Because um, a lot of toxic communities that I've met and dealt with over the last few years, and there's it seems like there's very few gaming communities that are just, like, all positivity, you know? I don't know. You got anything to add to any of this, Corey? Um, no, other than it, it is kind of hard to find a group of gamers who just want to talk about good games, so hopefully we can fill the void. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, and if you guys... Not to not to be all recruity here, but if you guys know of other people that um, you think would be interested in, in, I don't know, joining a community like this, uh, kind of having our same same values or whatever and uh, and whatnot, invite them. In, um, trying to make a Discord, it's kind of in the works right now. A lot of things are going to be in the works. There was a lot of, um, there's some delays too, because I was like moving and, and whatnot recently. But um, so, I mean, plans for going forward. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, I, yeah, I guess we should say plans going forward. So I think of at some point, like a nice positive Discord is good. Um, I think setups for this show typically, I think what we kind of want to do. Um, potentially like have a game of the week and let let us know um if you think uh, um this stuff sounds like great ideas good ideas bad ideas um constructive feed feedback and criticism is good um just don't like curse at us and say what what that, what a terrible idea don't do that don't do that at all um please keep it like i said drama free positive but um, one thing I would like to do is have dev interviews on. We could get some like indie devs and maybe interview a dev. Maybe not every episode, but like somewhat frequently. Um, uh, have uh, 
maybe have like a game of the week or something or like a a book club sort of deal a game club video game of the week where we could all um uh, play the same game together maybe discuss it in, in discord what's going on or something and and then talk about it on the show um i think that'd be cool uh like i said some youtube videos of of some uh, some games to show off and uh maybe kind of review -y. and they're gonna be rough at the beginning but because i don't uh, i haven't edited a video before so they're gonna be pretty rough um cory is gonna outshine me he's gonna make these videos that are just like flawless and you're gonna know right away <laughs> oh retro made this one. Oh, this is a cory one all right it's time to actually watch this one not just click it and realize oh this guy made it. All right, let's click away. Um, so we'll figure it out on the fly. Yeah, and uh, we'll probably this this show might have some changes to it too. It might evolve immensely within the coming months. We'll see. So um, yeah, uh, I think uh, I think that's pretty good for an intro. Chris, like I said, I'm going to f*** a bunch of stuff. I'm, so, but anyway, so for this first episode, um, let's uh, do kind of like a 2020 Game Awards. I, it, it is almost February, though. It might be February by the time this even gets out. I don't know. But, um, the uh, yeah, we'll do like our top three games of the year. Uh, games that came out in 2020. And then we'll do some funny awards for, uh, are these, these are games that came out in 2022, so, um, and then, yeah, if you guys, uh, want to add your, what you chose for certain of these categories in comments below, feel free, because I would like to hear them. I'd be curious. Anyway, so, should we start out with the game of the years, or should we start out with some funny awards? Uh, we could do a couple funny and then do some goaties and then move back to the rest of the funnies. And then do, yeah. Well, how about we do, we got how many funnies? Six? I have six, yeah. All right, so let's do maybe two funnies, one game of the year, two funnies, our second game of the year, the other two funnies that honorable mentions and then we'll end it with the game of the year for us that sounds perfect all right so funny awards you started off all right all right number one the game from a legacy platform such as nintendo entertainment system wii atari ps1 through ps3 xbox xbox 360 pc etc that you played in 2020 Oh, you're not going to say, and here's going to, oh yeah, I, I'll, I'll go. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, uh, and my choice for this award goes to super Mario 3d all-stars. And I was, uh, it, very excited. Several legacy platforms with that. I know <laughs> that's a, that gets the gold medal for hitting three combo platforms. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, pleasantly surprised to see that this was going to be an offering from Nintendo. Um, I do find the limited sale till uh, March thirty first to be a bit weird, but hopefully I feel they... like that. I th I feel like the games are still going to be available. I feel like they're just going to break up the collection. Is my thought, but well, oh, that that could be. We'll see. And it, if they do keep it around. Um, Hopefully you all get a chance to pick this one up and play it. If you have not already had the luxury of playing Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, or Super Mario Galaxy, which were, in my opinion, console-defining games for each of those respective platforms that they graced, um, do yourself a favor and pick up this game. It is perhaps the epitome of 3D platforming. It's fun. Uh, some of the action and some of the uh, fast paced things that you are required to do for the later game challenges are completely nuts. 
um, and you really have to think outside the box. Others are, um, you know, Mario in its heyday of being pixel perfect jumping to get that right wall jump and beat the, the record time that you need. And the very beginning part of the levels are super accessible, very fun. The atmosphere, the music, um, all of it is just a wonderful delight to revisit in 2020. All right. And uh, yeah, I have I really enjoyed uh, Mario 64, Mario Galaxy. I have never played Mario Sunshine. Don't bash me, Corey. I won't. I should probably I should probably um, pick that up at some point. I haven't played like Galaxy or um, uh, 64 in a long time either. So you think they aged well? Super Mario 64, I don't know that it aged well. However, it hit the nostalgic notes for me. So that's why I really enjoyed my time playing through it again. Right. And it, But it was also at least, uh, I played it when it first came out. So that was 1996 or so. And I, the last time that I may have plugged that game in would have been 1998. So it's been nearly 20 years or over 20 years since I last played. So in a while. Yeah. And nostalgia yes, is a powerful thing. Powerful, powerful. Oh, it is. Um, all right. So for me, it's also going to be a Mario game. It's going to be a little bit before, um, these 3d all-stars titles. It's going to be super Mario P cross. Now, one of the things I really like is puzzle games and like actual legit puzzles like P cross and uh, word puzzles and um, things of that nature. And this game really surprised me actually, because it was um, released on the uh, I almost said virtual console, but that's not what it is. The switch is online service. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was shocked at how good like the puzzles were and stuff and how many there were. I was like, wow, this has so much content. I am I'm surprised for a game that came out so long ago. And granted, some of the there wasn't like any huge gigantic boards, but I I enjoyed it. I had a I had fun with it. It was relaxing to do like a puzzle every now and then and, and things like that. It was good for the airplane, too. It was a very good airplane game. Now, I got to say, I had never really dabbled in this genre before of the puzzle or the pixel art games. And I first got exposed to this maybe a couple years ago with Minecraft. I was doing a whole bunch of pixel art designs in creative mode. And earlier this year, I had a chance to try out Pick a Picks classic or pick a picks one for vita which was a lovely game to just play on an airplane like retro said um very accessible very easy and at the end once you do a eight by eight grid or a, a 10 by 10 grid of of just pixel art things it's really fun to just see um, the picture is yeah yeah see these different designs and there is a, a little bit of a puzzle element to it you just have to count numbers kind of like minesweeper um, so it's not horribly complex or, you know, challenging in the sense that you're going to be banging your head against a wall. Um, so it's just a nice, fun, light game that you can kind of pop in to either kill time or, uh, unwind at the end of a busy work day. Yeah. Um, all right. So what's the next award? The next award, the couch co-op game that enhanced your friendship with someone. And for this award, I'm going to choose Moving Out, a game that came out earlier this year, I believe in April. Um, and it launched on PlayStation 4, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. I played this entirely uh, through couch co-op with a friend um, on PlayStation. And I got to say, this was just a refreshing, surprising little game that 
I saw maybe two years ago in a sizzle reel for the, the Nindy Switch titles that were coming soon. And I patiently awa uh, waited for from news from the developer about when this was coming out because I, I have been a previous fan of Overcooked. I love the tenseness that you get from, you know, trying to beat the clock with your friend when um, the the game is kind of designed around these hectic moments where you have, you know, so many different balls that you're trying to juggle all at once. Um, and moving out seemed to scratch that same itch that I had from Overcooked and playing Overcooked two, uh, one and two over the past couple of years with friends. So I gave this one a shot and I was absolutely delighted at the end with the amount of 80s and 90s puns and references. I think there's even a Seinfeld level. So it has a bunch of little uh, nods and winks to older things, at least from my childhood that I appreciated. And so this was just a fun little game to um, play. I think it's $25, so it's not a major uh, investment on your part and it'll probably give you at least 20 to 30 hours of gameplay by the time you get everything accomplished yeah i i've seen gameplay of that it does look um pretty fun if you had someone to play it with um, and it's, it's awesome that they put those little things in there i i like that too and there's little like easter eggs and, and things like that and hints it uh towards references and whatnot mm-hmm now, don't be alarmed or scared off by the fact that it's a couch co-op game. There is an option in this game that you can um, give one player superpowers and you can carry out uh, two player pieces of furniture by yourself. Um, so it, while I did try that, it's not quite as fun as you and your friend fumbling around trying to throw a couch through a window off of a two-story building into the back of a moving truck. Um, you can still have a pretty fun time throwing a refrigerator across the room and breaking windows and <laughs> and trying to uh, smash 30 pieces of furniture into this moving truck. Yeah, I am actually going to have to take a pass on this award because I don't think I've <laughs> seen couch co-op games in 2020 at all. I don't even know if I played a co-op game in 2020. Well, it is, yeah, it's a little hard in the pandemic era to sit next to somebody. Yeah, that's true. But hopefully in 2021, we'll be able to return to normalcy as far as couch co-op games go. Would be nice. Also, maybe I'll I'll find someone to actually play couch co-op games with. Um, anyways, let's uh, move on to our game of the year number three. I'll go first for this one. And so mine is going to be a game called Evergate. And it is a puzzle platformer. And uh, it was... It really surprised me, actually. Because uh, it had... It had, like, almost, like, this upgrade kind of system to it. Which I was, I, like, really liked. Um, like, if you did certain requirements in the level, like beat it fast enough, or collected all of the collectibles or whatever, you would unlock um, points, and they would unlock these, like, charm kind of emblem things you could equip. And you could equip, and they would, like, enhance some abilities, like you could jump higher and whatnot. So, it was kind of cool. Um, it, it was giving me another reason. I am kind of a completionist as well, but... It was giving me another reason to want to 100% all the levels. And the game wasn't even that hard either. Like, I know a lot of um, puzzle platformers can get, like, ridiculously hard. Um, with the the charm system, or emblem system, or whatever, whatever they're called in the game, you can kind of... Uh, there's like multiple ways to finish the levels and you can kind of not be a hundred percent perfect on the jumping things and that like the navigation mechanic through levels also very interesting um i thought too um, and the art style was amazing um it just felt it felt good to play too um it was very weird at first the controls took some getting used to but i i would recommend it 
And again, it's not that expensive of a title. I think it's like, I don't know. I'm not going to say a price because I don't even know. I would say like 20 bucks. <laughs> But yeah, that's going to be my my number three. All right. Well, my number three is one of PlayStation's older flagship titles, and it's Sackboy, A Big Adventure. Now, the last time I had, well, that anybody had played a Sackboy game was Little Big Planet 3, which came out nearly six years ago in 2014. So this property has been dormant for a little while, but I was really grateful that it came out with Sackboy, a big adventure. I played on PS5, and as you may have suspected by now, I do really like playing 3D platformers, and this game delivered on all fronts. There was quite a bit of challenge in terms of navigating Sackboy through these various um, levels and complications and challenges. They really kind of flip the script on how you move sometimes, which is always a welcomable, is that a word? Um, <laughs> it's always welcome to kind of, you know, twist the way that you think about things. Um, in fact, the last time that this happened to me was Super Mario Galaxy, when you, the very first time that you are walking and you feel the gravity of another planet kind of pull you across the screen. Um, Sackboy while not working with gravity or the, um, you know, being the confines of what gravity can do in a game, it does make you think uh, you will be inverted for parts of the level. Um, and the challenge is that the game provides due scale. There will be some times where you just have to work with the level to understand it and you can fine tune your approach to certain things, particularly with the golden or the knitted night trials, I think. Um, and other than that, the music's fantastic. The way that the music is integrated with the levels is absolutely brilliant design. Um, I found my head nodding to the beat more than once, and the beat of the level or the song um, is kind of integral to your success. So if you play a lot of your games with headphones on, I highly recommend it. If you're a fan of music, I would highly recommend it. Um, and if you're just a fan of, you know, Scaling Big. challenge 3D platforms, then I would highly recommend it too. All right, sounds good. Um, all right, let's go back to uh, some funnies. All right, uh, another one the couch I'm gonna have to another one I'm gonna have to pass on the, <laughs> the couch co op game one. It's the, the couch co op game that stretched your friendship. And yeah. for me, this has to go to overcooked all you can eat. I don't know that any more can be said about the challenge that Overcooked presents. And Overcooked All You Can Eat came to PlayStation 5, and it's just a combination of Overcooked 1, the DLC from Overcooked 1, plus Overcooked 2 and its DLC. And so I played this over a week with two of my old college friends, and I got to say it really... Uh, it kind of brought me some PTSD of playing these games back in the day several years ago with these same two individuals where we were just screaming at each other like, I need another burger! Or, where's the tomato? I need tomato! And <laughs> um, it's probably a good thing that I am just good friends with these two individuals outside of the game because if I were playing with someone random, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be friends because... I don't know that you can just start yelling at a random stranger that you're you need four buns for the burgers before they can go out, or you know I need you to clean some plates, please. Um, but if you are looking for another couch co-op game that is uh, fun, but it can also be excruciatingly painful and stress your friendship, then definitely check out Overcooked All You Can Eat. Do you got any funny stories that happen within those uh, gaming sessions? Any um, I do. I have two. On people's heads? All right. Sure. I do have two. So there's there's a DLC level. I think it's for Overcooked Two. It's a Thanksgiving themed one. So you're cooking turkeys, and instead of cooking the turkey in the traditional method where you put it in an oven, they give you a flamethrower. And at one point, my friend was just grabbing turkeys out of here and blasting them with this flamethrower, and we had. You're only supposed to like cook 
three to four meals at a time. We had like 12 cooked turkeys just sitting all throughout the level. They were on the floor. I was thinking if the food vendors or the, the food authorities who come in and check the restaurants and give you some sort of score that we would get the lowest score in the history of that score because there was turkey, there was lettuce, there was all kinds of stuff just sitting on the floor, fully cooked. And I was preparing all these meals <laughs> on the plate and delivering them on time and in order. Uh, hopefully the patrons of that restaurant didn't know that they were, you know, put together on the floor <laughs> and then served. And the other funny moment that I had from there, um, at one point there was a situation where I was trying to tend to something and I totally forgot about the meat that was cooking in the skillet at the bottom of the screen. And by the time the level, um, the way that it was moving around it, there was a, a challenge in how you could move. I think it was either conveyor belts or an, an elevator of some sort. I couldn't get back to it. By the time I did get to it, I had 10 squares of my entire kitchen covered in fire and burnt meals everywhere. And it was just a total disgrace. The only thing that you can do at that point is restart. <laughs> Okay, but but th there wasn't any uh, IRL uh, damages done. No one on your call oh. got uh, got a slapping or uh, or something. No, like I said, the uh, the relationships that I had with my two friends that I play Overcooked with, um, we just kind of you know sat there in silence and then no finger pointing, no blame assignment, just you know wow. I didn't know it could all go to crap that quickly. <laughs> all go to crap that fast. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. Those sorts of games. But that's what makes them fun as well. So, um, yep. Stories. And he's on the floor. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you are in a restaurant and you see a crocodile or a raccoon preparing your food, you may want to reconsider dining there. <laughs> um, I would definitely reconsider dining there if it's a raccoon. It might have rabies and it can be good. <laughs> Just true. I think that they chose their character design on purpose like that. All right. Um, and our fourth superlative award for 2020, the game that you purchased in 2020 that's still sitting at the top of your backlog. And I'll have you go first on this one. All right. For me, it's going to be Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, the uh, the kind of like remaster remake sort of sort of deal. Um, and that one is that was my first ever Zelda game. That was my first ever Game Boy game. Uh, I love the like top down two D Legend of Zelda setups. I mean, I like the three D ones too, but the the top down ones. Definitely my favorite, and uh, I only played the original. I know they made it again, like they um, redid it again for 3DS. Maybe it was. I don't know, but I didn't. I think that sounds right. And then uh, so now there's this version. I am looking forward to it. I mean, I it's been a long time since I played it. I'm sure I forgot a lot of it, but I'm looking forward to the. Uh, the nostalgia. It'll be like uh, Corey playing Mario 64 again. I'll be, uh... I, I don't know. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And as you should be, I played this one earlier this year. I loved it. Um, so once you do have a chance to take the shrink wrap off and give it a, a spin, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on it. All right, will do. Maybe I'll... I'll uh, Say it in another episode of this or something. I think we should yeah. do that too. We should kind of give a recap of what we've been playing recently in these uh, in these podcast episodes. Be All right, well, and we can add if, to, add to this. Hey, like, if that's the case, then then hopefully you will hear from me soon about my choice, Catherine Full Body. Now, I had been following this game since the it was first launched in PS3, and I've never really thought that it would be a game for me. It's not within my traditional wheelhouse. Um, 
However, after seeing it get a re-release with the Catherine Full Body Edition, and I saw it at GameStop on sale for 50% off, I believe, um, over the holidays, I had to give it a shot um, because it, it, it means something if an older game like this gets a re-release, um, that it must be special. So I, I really am looking forward to playing this. Um, and now that I picked it up on Switch, I'll be able to play it on the go, which I think would be a real nice thing because it doesn't seem like it's super intensive or you would need a, you know, you have to play on a large screen TV to get the full experience. So that's why I chose Switch as my platform to play this neat little title. Yeah, it, I've I've heard a lot of good things about that one. I haven't played that one uh, myself personally, but... I've heard a lot of people, a lot of people liking that. So. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the Tower of Babel stuff. That could be pretty hard, but uh, I welcome the challenge, I guess. Although I say that and I don't know what I'm getting into, but I could be reporting back to you in a couple of weeks saying like, oh my God, this is so hard. It's so hard. Oh, I don't have the game anymore. I, I took it on my Switch and snapped it in half. Oh, I actually don't <laughs> have Switch anymore. My Switch is in two pieces on my bathroom floor. Hopefully not the case. No, I, I don't think it'll get to that point. Okay. All right. Game of the year number two. I'm going to go with a game called Forgone. And I think a lot of people have also not heard of this one. It was, um, it was a 2D platformer. Kind of had some Metroidvania aspects to it, but it was pretty linear. Um, the progression through the levels, but you could go back and get, like, upgrades to, to skills and whatnot. Um, it had some roguelike elements to it, too, or roguelite. Um, I don't want to get into that argument ever, so please, guys, leave that out of the comments. Um, the, uh, um, but it was very light. Like, if you died, you lost all your currency and your, um, your, uh, spirit or not spirit gems i i don't know you used it to upgrade your skills and uh the currency you used to upgrade your weapons but you could uh you could go back and get to the point you left off break a pot get all your stuff back or go to some salesman there who will make a deal where you can get half of it back just they just give you half of it back um like the death deal or whatever but it was it felt really smooth it was great 2D platforming. It had some pretty interesting enemies. It had some pretty cool, um, like it was kind of like a a loot a looter um, Metroidvania roguelite combo. So it had a lot of loot being dropped, and these had some pretty cool skills like poisons on the weapons and um, and things like that and. It had this really good, uh, it, what made it also feel really good moving through is it kind of had this auto aim to the ranged attack. Um, so that was kind of cool. And then you didn't have like unlimited range attack. You had to slash melee slash to refill that up and stuff. And it was good. I, I suggest it. Um, I suggest giving it a look, trying it out. Um, again, I think it's maybe like a $20 game ish but yeah it's i think on all systems and it was fun i even did it again in new game plus even though i beat it and it was pretty much the same thing but i was getting better loot so yeah all right cory was it was yeah that, too. just to add to foregone i i watched you stream this a few times this looked like a really fun game that would be uh something that i would enjoy um, so I might check this out in the future. Like I said, I and it. yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I said, I, I recommend it. Um, my number two is kind of similar in that it's a rogue, like road light. Um, and my choice is Hades. So I played this on Nintendo switch. I immensely enjoyed my time with it. It felt like at every point in the road where I was going to master something, 
the game would open up and it would reveal to me that I knew nothing. And so if you're a Game of Thrones fans, you'll understand that I felt like Jon Snow, where I, at every point where I thought I was going to master something, uh, the game would peel back the curtain and let me know that there is still plenty more to learn and experience. Um, and the number of times that that game did this to me is probably at least a half a dozen. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it was like, I mean, I was purposely trying to not, not, uh, because that's kind of how I've been liking the game now is not being spoiled as much as, um, and exploring the games for myself. And I was thinking, yeah, like every time it opened up, I was like, whoa, I, there's this to do now too. Like when I first started, I was like, I'm going to hundred percent this thing. And then more and more opened up and more and more opened up. And I was like, whoa, what are these things? This is like a whole exactly. It's like they give you like a thirtieth of the game when you start out, and then it's like every run you do. Well, maybe not every run, but man, it was yeah. Like I said, the expansiveness of that thing. Yeah, and I I don't want to even get close to spoiling anything for anybody, so I'm trying to be selective with my words here, but. If you have not played, can't stress enough to at least try this. I think there there might be a demo for Switch. So you, if you're on the fence and you don't really know what you're getting into, I think you can try it there. Um, and as Rec, uh, Retro said a few times, there's just so much that you get to a point where you think you're on the cusp of you know figuring it all out, and then there's more. Um, and the number of twists and turns that it does while roping in Greek mythology, it's just, it's chef's kiss to what a roguelike is, where you, you just keep getting stronger. Um, and it, it's just, it's really hard to put down. In fact, there was a superlative that I was going to hand out for Hades um, called the, I, I, I need to do one more run or I, I can't put this game down because I just want to play just one more time. And oh. I, I played for about a two week stretch there where um, every night I promised I would do one run. And there were some nights where that one run stretched into three and a half or four, where I just like, I, I wanted to see if I could get further or try a new weapon or tr try a new strategy. It's just, it's very addictive and it's very fun. You should have made the promise. I'm going to do one run and only one run. <laughs> well, if you do pick it up, you will find that it's very hard to limit yourself to just one run. Oh, uh, we should have done that award called the Bag of Chips Award. You can't. Oh yeah. <laughs> you just you can't just eat one. Can you? Maybe I can't, it, and Maybe I have a lot of self we'll... restriction. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the funnies. All right, uh, this one is the menu or in-game music award for a game music or a game soundtrack that was so good that you listened to it outside of the game. And I'll go ahead and just announce boldly that Spiritfarer might have one of the most beautiful soundtracks I've ever heard. Um, it has so much charm and emotion that go into it that you can... When you listen to this, you can do so as like a, a background music while you're studying or trying to get some work done, or you can pop on some headphones and just listen to this to kind of put you in a, a certain kind of like melancholic mood, or um, there's even tracks that just make you feel incredibly happy. And it's been a while since I've heard a game soundtrack that can take you through a, a wide range of emotions like Spirit Fair does for me. Yeah, I've I've seen things with Spirit Fair. It does look it does look like a good game. I've heard it too. Um I mean yeah, I mean you actually sent me some uh songs on Discord that I listened to and I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. So. Alright, for me, it's not actually menu music. 
It's kind of in gamey music. It actually just happened to me yesterday night. And that is, there is a boss in Hollow Knight called uh, Grim or er, Nightmare King Grim. Oh no! You know you fought that thing. I will never forget the music to that, and that just tells you how many times I had to replay that stinking boss. Oh my gosh! I love that intro music though. Now. The the hours it spent it took me to beat him finally. At least I could listen to that every time. So <laughs> that was good. And the, the music during that fight was awesome too, but um yeah, it's a little of a weird one, but specifically his intro music. And then I listened to it a little bit after I uh after I beat him. Because it was partly as a victory. With oh yeah, you gotta you gotta play the bad guy's theme once you beat him, just nonstop. Yeah. To feel the triumph and the joy of overcoming that hurdle, it, it you can just relive it through the music. Now that said, you can also um, experience <laughs> some traumatic stress by re-listening to that song if you, depending on how many times it took you. Oh no, the the Hollow Knight PTSD syndrome. No. Yep. <laughs> Now, Hollow Knight, if you, depending on how many things you've played, the one part that I love about that game is each boss has its own theme. And I think some, you'll, you'll notice like some of the same melodies and harmonies across each um, boss that, you know, over encompass the entire game, which just makes the complete soundtrack such a masterpiece um, to have like these same things kind of crop up and appear in, the various songs that you hear, um, but yet each track on its own sounds very distinct and unique. And you can, if you listen to the soundtrack, you'll remember that boss encounter, which is really cool. Really, really cool. Well, I think I'm going to correct you um, when you said the one thing I like about that game. There's not like a thousand things you like about that game. Oh, I think there might actually be a million. That game is is absolutely brilliant. It is. It is. My th and we'll see. Uh, Team Cherry is supposed to give us some news about um, the new game coming soon. About they, Hornet Night. They did have one... Well, when did they say this? Uh, I think it was two years ago. No, I mean the... Um... The recent, they said they were going to make recent news? About it. Uh, well, they said a couple of years ago that it was coming soon. And I would think that, you know, two, it, within two years of giving us a new game that it oh, would be okay. close. But I, th yeah. I thought you meant you heard something like, oh, they're supposed to make an announcement in a, in a couple of weeks or something. Yeah, there was some like article on I think like July first or um, January first this year that uh, I didn't really read too much because I kind of want to go into it pretty much as blind as I can. But um, I also uh, sad to say I only started playing Hollow Knight about last week. So <laughs> um, yeah, but nothing wrong with that. Finally getting to some of the backlog. All right. It's, yeah, it feels good to move your way through the backlog. Especially with good games. Oh, my goodness. All right. Yep. Game you and played from a genre you don't regularly play. It's going to be our last uh, funny-ish award here. I'm going to say, I don't know, because I played a variety of games. Or a variety of genres. I'm gonna say Hades, because I haven't played that many roguelites, I guess. But, uh, I like... It, it, I really liked it. <laughs> a lot. That's all I'll say about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Alright, so the game that I played from a genre I don't regularly pick up, is Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, and 
I don't really like you. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this other than it's just so much fun to slay massive amounts of Bokoblins uh, with all the various heroes from Hyrule. I I'm immensely enjoying each minute that I spend with this game. Um, and you, you build up your powers and get new combos and everything. So there's plenty of uh, progression systems to keep you coming back for more. And it's just, it's, you know, super satisfying to just slay a bunch of people with one swipe of your sword. Now, I never got into like the Dynasty Warriors type stuff, so I imagine it's it feels very familiar if you're if you're a, a veteran of those games. Um, but for me, since I'm not, this is just a a really fun um, experiment for me of never really trying this type of game before, and now I'm just having a blast walking around. High rules slashing through my way through hordes of enemies. Yeah, I played a bit of the demo. I um I didn't play the game, um, like the full game, but I played a lot of Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors four was what introduced me to the warrior genre. And four and five, oh I played those so much. Um but yeah, it uh I think a lot of people have well, I think a lot of people have not played that genre, really. Or a lot of people bash the genre for being just mindless and repetitive. Or they really, really, really like it. And it's, yeah. it's kind of relaxing and calming, too. I mean, it's fairly easy, those types of games, typically, for the most part. But, um, and yeah, they do kind of get repetitive, but it's kind of nice to just... I don't know. If you had a long day and just mindlessly slash through hordes of enemy type X, depending on what kind of game, what the um, the IP of the game is that they're going with on the, in the Warriors style there. So. Yeah, and what sucked me in here uh, um, is the fact that it is, in a certain sense, a prequel to Breath of the Wild, which is one of my favorite games I've played recently. Um, I am a, a lifelong Zelda fan, so whenever I get a chance to hop back into Hyrule and, you know, wield the Master Sword and play as Link, I take all of those opportunities when I can. And that's what sucked me in, and I'm, you know, pleasantly surprised with how much fun I'm having with this game. Yeah, I think that's what got a lot of people to try it out in the sales became massive. So, all right. So let's let's go to our game of the year. Well, actually, first, you got some honorable mentions to get through. I do have some honorable mentions. And a couple of these are uh, a little older. They came to other platforms um, prior. Now, for me, since I'm mostly a, still a PlayStation player, um, 2020 was the first time that I had a chance to pick these up and play. And the first one I'll mention is Unrailed, which is a four-player co-op game where it's basically a high score chaser and your objective is to farm materials to build a railroad track and try to get your railroad track as far as you can. And you'll move through different environments along the way as you upgrade your train cars to do certain feats such as build a dynamite cart or build an invisible cart which means you can walk through parts of your train um, there are a bunch of neat little mechanics that they use in this game to uh, make you feel like you're getting better or stronger or that your railroad car is more manageable as you encounter new um, enemies or new challenges such as the terrain or the amount of or the scarcity of materials really 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 neat title um i highly recommend you check that out and similarly to unrailed this game came to xbox a couple years ago and for the first time on playstation this year cuphead a 2d uh shmup if you will um a platforming shmup. Very unique. If you've not had a chance to pick up and play this title, I highly recommend it. 
I had a blast, um, even though it is incredibly challenging and hard to get through, of learning the bosses, their moves, the animations. It's all gorgeously done in a, uh, I think the term is Fleischer or Flesher. Um, it's an old animation style used in the 20s and 30s. It, uh, with maybe even the term might be rubber hose, something like that. Um, if you want to, you can really go down the rabbit hole and learn a lot about animation and old styles of animation by just researching Cuphead and what the developers MDHR had to do to get this game to look so good. And don't be deceived by the cartoonish nature to the way the graphics and the art design went. This game is hard. It will punish you. You will have to learn and study the various bosses that you encounter to make sure that you come out on top. Um, but it, it it's just, it's a marvelous game. I really enjoyed playing it. And, you know, if you're up for the challenge, this is a game that you will feel immense satisfaction for finally overcoming those challenges. Yeah, I've heard now, Rick, that uh, game is yeah, hard ahead. with a capital H. <laughs> and it is an underline that thing too and uh i have one more honorable mention and this came as a pack-in game with playstation 5 and it is astro's playroom now again another third uh third person platforming uh, or th 3d platformer um just an absolute brilliant love letter to playstation the amount of attention and love that they put into this little game is just incredible. Um, it helped, you know, relive some of my early PlayStation memories of PlayStation 1 and PSP. It even taught me that there was like a camera for PlayStation Portable, which <laughs> that just seems like it's so far ahead of its time. Um, and you know, all these le uh, levels, all the references to the various PlayStation IPs that we've had the, the privilege to play over the past 20 years or 30 years now of PlayStation history. Just a really, really fun experience. All right. You want to go to... Well, I'll do my game of the year because we have already talked about it. And my game of the year is going to be Hades. Um, that's why I didn't say too much about it in the game you enjoyed from a genre you don't really play and I was trying not to say too much when Corey made it his number two. Corey, it should have been your number one. <laughs> um, but man, this game, oh my goodness. When Corey was saying I could only do, I just couldn't stop at one more run. I think this was the only game I played for like a month straight. I mean, I was, I almost filled out the entire codex. Um, there's just, couple RNG things in there that, like I said, it's very RNG. And, uh, but man, it, I don't know. I just got not enough good things to say about this. Or too many good things to say. Not enough good things? Wait. Yeah, too many good things to say. I think the first <laughs> set was dissing it, which I don't mean to do. Um, yeah, it just, art style, gameplay, there's so many different, like, builds you can do. Um, when I first started out, I felt like I was god-awful at the game, pun intended. And, uh, just, I don't know, like, progressing through it and stuff, I felt pretty good. Like, the first successful run, I was like, oh my goodness, finally. And yeah, the amount of unlockables and um, like systems in that game, and it was, it's a gem. Highly, highly recommend it. So, yeah. I'll just add one more thing to Hades. This is also such a, a perfect game to enjoy organically. Um, try not to look up like wikis or you know how to play i would highly encourage anyone who does play to just learn everything on your own 
Um, that way you can completely enjoy all the many surprises that it's going to throw your way. Oh yeah. I, I agree. I, I agree with that. Um, wholeheartedly. The, uh, like I said, you get like this shock value of like, Oh my goodness. That's so cool. That's so awesome that they, they have this in the game. All right, Corey, what's your game of the year for 2020? All right, here's the last one. And it's a very divisive game, uh, partly controversial, but I really did enjoy playing this and seeing the conclusion of the story. And my game of the year goes to The Last of Us Part Two. Um, I will refrain from going into in-depth talk about it um i just want to say that what they managed to accomplish with the tech of this game it really pushes the medium of video games forward um i mean this is an emotional roller coaster um the music the story everything is just so finely tuned um, that it, it can be that type of game that teaches or shows non-gamers the power of what games can do. And for that, for that reason alone, that's why this is my game of the year, because it just, it blew me away at several different points with the creativity, the way that everything was orchestrated between the story beats, the music, the acting, the voice acting, it's just, it, it really is incredible that you can do that in a video game. Um, and like I said, for that reason, it's just, it was really special to play through this. So thank you, Naughty Dog, for putting this together. Uh, your hard work will not go underappreciated for me. All right, sounds good. So, um, oh, I think... While we were talking about those games, to be all uh, scattered brained all over this first episode of the podcast, um, what are your favorite genres of games? Mine? Yeah. If I had to say, I, I really do think that Metroidvania, I know that that's not technically a genre in its own, it's just it's the name of two historic franchises put together. Um, that's actually my favorite genre, just because I, I like, um, the mechanic of being overwhelmed at first, and then with each additional piece of gear or armor or a uh, tool or whatever that you get that now you can go back to that previous area and you no longer feel scared. You feel empowered to try new things or explore in a different way. I really like how those systems build upon your prior um, gaming style and really open up new ways to think about and or explore your way through the rest of the game. Favorite uh, unlock in Metrovania's? Um, so I got to think back to my time with Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And I think the one that... The one thing that you get in any Metroidvania that really just takes it to a whole new level is double jump. Yes. So I'm just going to say in general, double jump too. is my favorite mechanic. That's my favorite one too. And uh, yeah, I think I chose a good co-host. If you also like Metroidvanias and the double jump, I didn't actually know that about you. I thought you, <laughs> um, I thought you were going to say 3D platformers actually. Um, no, I, I do like a good 3D platformer, but nothing beats the exploration and and just really sinking into a game and and trying to learn the map, trying to explore and you know figure out like oh I wonder if this little nook will lead to something or if this is just to throw me off. Yeah, um, yeah, I think my favorite genre is uh, Metroidvanias. Um, I guess a little bit of roguelites. Uh... I want to try more now that I played some Hades. Uh, games sort of like Mega Man, uh, Zelda, uh, monster taming like Pokemon. Uh, 
uh, JRPGs and RPGs, pixel art things, 2D platformers. I'm I'm pretty uh, pretty much more of an old school kind of person and things that are inspired. The new indie takes on these old school ones I I enjoy. So um, yeah, mix in a little bit of puzzle action, mix in a little bit of rhythm. You know, um, I don't play too many like shooters um, and things like that or sports games anymore. So, but yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for our first episode. I ra we ran kind of a little bit longer than I thought we would actually. Um, yeah. Which is all right. About an hour, hour, 15 minutes here. So. Why don't we uh, say where we can find each other, um, or where you guys can find us at? Sure, um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm Core Dog C O R D A W G four one one, and that's also my handle for Xbox Live, PSN, and Nintendo Switch. All right, and um, you can find me on Twitter at RetroGavania. Um, and I will be posting updates for the show and the podcast on there and uh, YouTube videos when we, we uh, get them to come out. I uh, stream also on Twitch most nights. Uh, right now it is Retro underscore Vania, and I'm going to change the name to Retro Vania as soon as Twitch lets me. So I'll put the links for all this stuff in the description, um, but that will potentially change if you watch this episode like two months from now and uh retro underscore vania will be like it'll say oh page can't be found or whatever go back to the time machine or, or whatever happens uh then i will also link the uh the discord that we're trying to build up um in the description as well and uh i think that's pretty much all i'm using right now so, yeah, and uh, I guess I should do the YouTube plug. Oh, I also, I guess I'll try to work on getting this onto other platforms. Um, I, I know someone said they wanted it on Spotify. I have to figure that out. I have to figure a lot of stuff out, honestly. Um, heck, we don't even have, like, an official logo at the time of recording this. We're getting there. Peeling back the curtain and showing you how unprepared we are. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyways, with that being said, oh, yeah, also comment. Uh, we'd like to hear from you guys. Um, and uh, let us know. I guess I should say what? Like, like the video or whatever. Subscribe. Is that what they... Yeah, like, comment, subscribe video. is what they say. Yeah, like, subscribe, comment. And uh, share it. Be cool to, you know, I think we got some good reasoning for the show and whatnot. So help, help the indie devs also as well. So with that being said, everybody, have a good night, good morning, enjoy your games. Thanks for watching, listening. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody.